Hello, we hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. And what's a better way to start your Friday than with a fake operation? We've obviously seen quite some time ever since our last CSGO operation, but now scammers out there are making their own fake ones. It was actually known as Operation Enclave. It was sent to me late last night. The website was up for quite some time, and yes, it's fake. And on top of that, also thanks to Jesus, apparently a scam. If you actually went to the website where they said it was brought to us by Valve Software and also in beta testing, if you tried to sign in through Steam for this beta testing before it went live, obviously to get, your, to get your chance to take part in the CSGO operation, it took you to a fake Steam page where it would probably exploit your IP slash login, and it's a, it's a terrible scam. Obviously on top of that, pretty easy to fake, considering apparently Operation Enclave has actually been a concept piece for quite a few years now. So it's just crazy to see the level of scumminess out there, thanks to a guy named John Webster. I hope you're watching this somehow, and I hope, do I dare say, I hope some bad things happen to you, man. It's just the scumminess of this community sometimes, it never baffles me. So always be careful guys, always watch out. I know we're getting restless, okay? I know we're getting angsty before our next operation. We all want it, trust me, this is just not the way we're gonna get it. So if, uh, apparently Operation Enclave is, uh, is yes fake, and luckily ever since, uh, I did post this on Twitter, ever since then the website has been taken down, but please just always keep an eye on these kind of things because there are so many scams in the CSGO community, it's it's actually ridiculous. And also news out there, yes, plenty of CSGO events we will break down here on Monday, but Astralis fans rejoice, another Blast Pro event on the horizon and speaking of Astralis fans, um, we had this picture posted to Twitter, but I actually want to take a little clarity on this. If you guys actually did go on the post itself, the poster of this, the guy who was kissing Dupree, he made sure to clarify he did ask Dupree for permission and Dupree accepted because apparently this guy, one of his friends had kissed Dupree in a picture in the past and he wanted to kind of uh, kind of remake that picture. So uh, to me, this takes big kahunas to actually do this. First of all, to take a picture with a pro and kiss him, Props to you, man. Second of all, to post it publicly where you know you're going to get a lot of backlash about people feeling uncomfortable about it. Big kahunas to you, man. And all the pro players out there, whoever take pictures with me, watch out. I'm I'm coming for you. And finally, thank you, the CSGO gods. We have such a long list out there. If you guys follow Nell on Twitter, such a long, extensive list of CSGO talent out there available as free agents or even to be bought out from some CSGO rosters out there. NATO Sapphics has definitely been one of them. He's been waiting for months to be signed as an opera or an IGL or even both for a roster out there. And his time has finally come as Heroic has actually benched Mertz from that roster and added NATO in. And uh, pretty, I would say, somewhat shocking, although um, I think it was even more so shocking for Mertz if you guys did see his HLTV interview was two days ago. He said things like this and then he got kicked the day later. So pretty shocking. I'm, I'm going to assume he probably had no idea based off what he said. If he did actually have an idea, I'd be pretty surprised. But either way, I think honestly a great pickup here for Heroic. Now I'm not going to say that Merch was doing amazing things as of late. I think he still has high potential, but I pretty am sure that his numbers had fallen off over the, the recent times as well. So I think for now, NATO Sapphics will stand in for the team as an opper. Will he eventually be become the IGL of the roster. I'm not sure as of right now, but this team certainly has potential because right away, their first series together as a complete roster with NATO Sapphics, they take down Team North very impressively as well. And uh, I actually bet on North for that series because, you know, Heroic made the roster change. So... Frick you, NATO. And other CSGO news out there, apparently according to Scott Smith, no further details have been brought to light right now. So I cannot confirm if this is actually true, but I highly doubt Scott would take this to Twitter unless it was. It was actually Team Denial apparently now for what, the second or third time potentially not paying their CSGO roster. If you guys have been following this, it was actually under a former CEO, a different CEO of the X Denial roster way, way back in the day where Fejits and those guys were apparently not being paid. We then had a new CEO, I believe his name was Zach Cook, take control of the brand. He promised to pay the old denial members their salaries along with that they signed the ex-bravado roster or at least four of those guys that roster lasted i think two to three months because they couldn't contractually agree on what to pay the players or what they were owed um, so that roster kind of moved on to now team atk i believe but then it was team denial signing a brand new csgo roster which is actually a south american team i believe from brazil that being team jaguar who is also a pro league team um, out of brazil as well so they have now been signed and apparently according to scott smith for the second or third time now team denial managed is not paying this brand new roster. If this does reign true, I know Denial also has a Call of Duty roster, a CSGO roster, maybe some other rosters out there, but most notably, their Call of Duty and CSGO teams. If this is true, though, and they are not paying players for the second or third time, 
have you ever thought of just about uh, leaving esports altogether? And very lastly, as well as we slowly approach ESL Cologne somewhat further in the summer, but especially when it comes to invites being announced, as me recording, no invite has been announced for the last spot to be directly invited. Uh, some people think Liquid, other people think maybe Cloud9 will slip a spot. Um, as me recording has not been announced yet, but could be sometime soon. But speaking of qualifiers and of course being invited, it will not be G2 who was actually invited to the event or the closed qualifiers. If you remember, it was actually Team Vitality. They were not given the invite directly to the event. It was in instead given to Mouse Sports. I think you can see kind of uh, both sides of that as to why they would choose Mouse Sports or Vitality. They went ahead and chose Mouse Sports over them. Vitality did receive an invite to the closed qualifiers and they should be making the tournament sometime today as they face off against Heroic. But now it comes down to the next best French team, that being G2, did not receive even an invite to the closed qualifier. I believe that spot we presume went to Hellraisers. And again, you can kind of see why they'd give it to Hellraisers or G2. Both kind of probably equal rosters. HR the newer roster as well. And so I kind of of understand but with this being said apparently Malik as well has announced they didn't actually get this information until uh, it was too late to actually have those open qualifiers um, in their timeline so unfortunately enough if this is true I do believe there should not be any other spots out there given to a GG bet tournament or so on and so forth which would mean for the first time in their careers Kenny S and Shocks will not be at an ESL Cologne event if this is true so which is always very sad to see so French players out there and French teams getting screwed over right and left but it's very very unfortunate that the team could not know ahead of time and of course compete in open qualifiers to try and qualify like they probably would have at least for the closed qualifier. But as always, hope you guys all enjoy your weekend. I'll be back here tomorrow with a very special Dragon Lore video. It's going to be a really fun one to do because someone sent me DMs a while ago about this on April 20th about this Dragon Lore and it's going to be a very fun episode. Along with that, this week has been crazy for CSGO. Tons of cheating allegations, lobby crashes, uh, server crashes as well. I've been contacted by the same guy who gave us or uh, the exploit for the cheat he made. Uh, I think it was actually last week we talked about this. He said it was not him or his group that is server crashing or lobby crashing. It just seems like right now uh, Valve and everything trying to stop cheaters is going a bit backwards. So it's been a crazy week of CSGO, a lot of cheating allegations and hopefully more coming next week in better news. And on top of that, I'll see you guys back here Monday breaking down tournament news as well as tomorrow with a special video. As always, hope you guys all enjoy. Have a safe weekend and uh, I'll see you all Monday.